2023 is giving us a lot of exciting blockbuster and smaller film releases, whether it be franchise fare or auteur-driven filmmaking. And while I'm super excited about films like Mission Impossible 7, Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon, David Fincher's The Killer, or even John Wick 4, there are two films that have been at the top of my most anticipated list for quite a while. And that's none other than Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why Dune Part 2 and Oppenheimer are my most anticipated films, and what particularly excites me for both filmmakers' latest big screen projects. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my content this year surrounding Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into why I'm excited for Oppenheimer and Dune Part 2. So with us now hitting 2023, I thought I'd base my first video of the year on two upcoming films by two of my favourite filmmakers working today. Both Christopher Nolan and Denis Villeneuve have a long history of making both commercially and artistically successful films, pushing the limits of filmmaking in multiple genres to new levels with their directorial styles and narrative motifs intact. And after some great films in 2022, particularly from auteur-driven blockbuster fare with Joe Kaczynski's Top Gun Maverick, Matt Reeves' The Batman, and James Cameron's Avatar The Way of Water, there's a growing sense that filmmakers who work on the biggest stage can craft films that push filmmaking in exciting new directions, both from a storytelling perspective and a practical filmmaking one too. Lead that into 2023 with both Nolan and Villeneuve's upcoming films, and I'm hoping that with Dune Part 2 and Oppenheimer, we can see two incredible features by directors at the top of their game. Starting with Oppenheimer, I know that Nolan's film isn't necessarily a blockbuster and it's more of a biopic, but Nolan consistently knows how to combine a movie of a large scale with another genre in every filmmaking instalment. And with Oppenheimer being described by the filmmaker himself as a film with a big scale, I think we can expect another blend of genres in traditional Nolan fashion. While Tenet was an everyone's cup of tea, for me personally, it was a film that provided extra narrative and filmmaking intrigue through multiple watches. Every rewatch of Tenet provided a new focus for me, and I think it can't be denied that Nolan's filmmaking ability hasn't gone down. Oppenheimer, while apparently keeping a large scale, is a biopic centred around the man who developed the atomic bomb, also known for being a part of the Manhattan Project, focuses on his life during the development of it, and then also afterwards, with all of the trials and political problems that followed. It provides more of a character canvas for Nolan to tell a deeply emotional and powerful story on, getting into the mind of Oppenheimer, which of course included all of the intelligence, but then also also all of the guilt he faced after the nuclear bomb was tested and eventually used. The source material which the film is based on, known as American Prometheus, was a Pulitzer Prize winning novel that detailed J. Robert Oppenheimer's life and career, providing all the material for the filmmaker to focus on. He's shown that he can do original stories and present them on an unprecedented scale in IMAX film. He's also shown that he can adapt iconic comic material into one of the greatest superhero trilogies of all time, and he further displayed that he can pull off a remake successfully. So the fact that we now get to see his adaptation of a novel is as intriguing as any Nolan picture from the outset. What transcends this above just being another highly anticipated Nolan film though, is that the filmmaker is working with possibly the most stacked cast and crew in years, which is something that I guess you could also apply to Dune and its sequels too. On Oppenheimer, we have three frequent Nolan collaborator Killian Murphy getting his first lead role in a Nolan picture, then we have the likes of Emily Blunt playing his wife, Robert Downey Jr playing the somewhat antagonistic role in court, Matt Damon, Florence Pugh, Rami Malek, Kenneth Branagh, Gary Oldman, and too many others to count. Nolan is also reteaming with cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema to push stunning new IMAX black and white photography, and he's also working again 
with composer Ludwig Göransson and editor Jennifer Lame after their collaborations on tenor. The known cast and crew are all established names in their individual fields and you can bet on plenty of Oscar nominations if those first trailers are anything to go on. For me though, the excitement for Oppenheimer stems around Nolan returning to a more character driven film and one that coupled with its impressive filmmaking can hopefully bring the story of Oppenheimer to life in a detailed and moving way. In my opinion, the best Nolan films focus on grief, personal identity, morality, time and the subjective experience and the story of Oppenheimer ticks all of those boxes. I'm particularly excited to see how Killian Murphy's performance highlights both the desperation yet the eventual grief that builds within the man after that known trinity test. And Nolan's thematic work is also probably the best in large scale blockbuster filmmaking and I can't think of a more immersive and intricate filmmaker to tell this story better. Already in that first full length trailer and the IMAX version in front of Avatar 2, we got a sense of the immersive visuals of a nuclear reaction, the colour footage that involved the developing of the atomic bomb, and the black and white IMAX photography that looks to be focusing on all the political trials that followed. And knowing Nolan, he'll probably interweave this all together through a complex narrative structure that only Oppenheimer can understand. We'll have to see if it lives up to all the hype, but right now, I think this has the potential to be a top tier Christopher Nolan film in nearly every aspect. And this now brings me to Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2. After already having two great blockbuster sequels in 2022 with Top Gun Maverick and The Way of Water, Part 2 of Dune has the potential to be even greater following the success and artistic quality of Part 1 for the science fiction genre. Denis Villeneuve himself is probably one of the greatest living artistic auteurs in large scale filmmaking with a streak of films that's quite unheard of. Now, I wouldn't consider him a blockbuster filmmaker in the way that, say, a Christopher Nolan or James Cameron is, because he tends to lean more towards the artistic. But in Arrival, Blade Runner 2049 and Dune Part 1, we got a growing sense that Villeneuve could really blend his directorial style with blockbuster traits too. And if you've read Dune, you'll know that the second half of Frank Herbert's novel promises it all. Large scale clashes, brain melting revelations, heady sci-fi concepts and dark familial developments that could make this the Empire Strikes Back of the modern Dune adaptation. The world of Arrakis is already expanding with multiple TV spin-offs on the way, including the HBO show Dune the Sisterhood, which is currently in production, and a previously mentioned third film in the Dune saga focused on Herbert's second book, Dune Messiah. While we haven't seen any footage from Dune Part 2, the cast and the filmmaker have promised big things from the sequel, and if Part 1 is only the beginning, then we can expect an even more impressive science fiction feat from the filmmaker. Part 1 was the pinnacle of immersive sci-fi storytelling on the big screen, giving us transportive visual moments that told the sweeping plot of a family travelling to Arrakis and being backstabbed by the ever-revealing Harkonnens. Dune Part 2 will dive deeper into the powers of Paul Atreides, the Fremen and the Harkonnens, bringing this all together in an explosive yet meaningful way too. And with cast additions of Austin Butler as the villainous Fade Rawfer, Christopher Walken as as the Emperor, and Florence Pugh as Princess Irulan, huge talent has been added to an already stacked cast. Part 1 won 6 Academy Awards and was successful at the box office, even in the wake of the awful HBO Max decision, and after it being one of the most rewatched films in the last year, you can expect Dune Part 2 to have a much wider audience come this November. Now of course, I can't wait to see how Denny captures large scale sequences such as the final battle from the novel, but I'm particularly intrigued to see how he will adapt important moments from the book like the Water of Life scene or the sequence where Paul learns to ride a sandworm in a way that is visually impressive yet realistic too, like he was able to accomplish with part 1. The difficulty of pulling some of this off is through the roof, but if anyone can do it, it's Denny Villeneuve, the filmmaker who spent a year with his team in just making sure the sandworms of Arrakis would be as detailed as they were in the final product. 
June is the artistic blockbuster done right, and I expect part two to be more than just your average sequel. So hopefully he delivers and sets up an expansive June universe that can be approached in even more films and shows by other quality storytellers and filmmakers in the years to come. Overall, 2023 marks the exciting return of Christopher Nolan and Denis Villeneuve. These are two directors who really take the time to bring stories and their filmmaking styles to the big screen in both familiar and new ways too. You know when you're watching a Nolan or Villeneuve film because their auteur style leaks through every frame visually, narratively or thematically. And with Oppenheimer and Dune Part 2, I think we could be getting both of them at their absolute best. Oppenheimer provides Nolan with a story that is so well connected to his filmmaking vision, a personal story that is complex, full of grief, and infused with an accelerating race against time. Oppenheimer had to build the bomb to end the war, but once he built it and it was used, he realised the death, destruction, and foreshadowing he would bring along with that creation. It's another troubled Christopher Nolan protagonist, and one that brings us back to the days of Memento, Insomnia, the prestige and inception, alongside a likely complex narrative structure that takes place in different time periods too. It resembles a Nolan picture to its core and presents an opportunity for a telling about Oppenheimer that is one part revealing and another part a warning. And then with Dune Part 2, Denis Villeneuve has the opportunity to show the full extent of what his large-scale filmmaking career has led to, which based on the second part of the Dune story, could be a perfect amalgamation of a well-thought-out blockbuster film alongside nuanced character work all at the same time. We get to witness the end of the Dune story, but the beginning of a much darker sci-fi universe on the big screen. It's the anti-Star Wars, and I think after so many retreads of that blockbuster Buster formula before, and heck, even Star Wars was inspired by the original Dune novel, I can see part two of Dune being a staple sequel film that is quite different to what has come before. Add on that Villeneuve and Nolan bring all of this to life in impressive ways using IMAX photography and practical filmmaking techniques, and we can expect two visual treats that push large-scale filmmaking forwards in interesting new ways. Yes, Oppenheimer and Dune Part 2 are two very different films in different genres, but both the filmmakers behind them understand the medium that they are creatively a part of, and there's a reason why both of them have continued to grow or sustain that growth in the last 10 to 20 years. They know how to connect to the audience and bring films that relate on a deeply personal level, even if they are set within a universe that has sandworms or amongst scientists in a remote facility developing a weapon that could destroy everyone on the planet. There's an immense care put into a Nolan or Villeneuve picture, and you always take something away from the filmmaking, even if the story isn't to your personal liking. I personally think that we need more care put into big budget storytelling after witnessing so many films that appear and feel very similar to what's come before. I think the success of The Batman, Top Gun Maverick, and Avatar The Way of Water showed that in 2022, as films that creatively, the filmmakers and teams behind them spent years years to craft in individually impressive ways. And hopefully both Oppenheimer and Dune Part 2 can continue this trend in 2023. For all we know, Dune and Oppenheimer might turn out to be missed opportunities, but knowing Nolan and Villeneuve, I'm hopeful that they will be as impressive as we expect. But that was my video discussing my excitement for both Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2. We'll have to see if both films deliver later on in the year, but in just discussing about why I'm excited for each of them, I for one can't believe that we are going to be getting a new Nolan and Villeneuve film releasing in the same calendar year. Not just that, but two projects that from what we know so far are both filmmakers' biggest passion projects ever brought to screen. Who knows, we could eventually be looking at a Nolan and Villeneuve Oscar race if both films do turn out to be great, and wouldn't that be interesting come award season in 2023? 
But regardless of the outcome, I will be covering both films in many videos throughout 2023 on the channel, including a Road 2 series for both of them, like previously seen with Tenet and Dune Part 1. I just can't wait until we finally get a chance to see what both directors have been working on, and hopefully they'll be as good as we anticipate. But what are your excitement levels currently at surrounding both Oppenheimer and Dune Part 2, and are both films on your most anticipated lists for 2023? Let me know down below in the comment section. For much more videos and news on Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Denis Villeneuve's Dune Universe, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.